What's going on, guys? Ben Brewster here at TradeFX.com. Today we're joined by Dr. Nevin Markle. Uh, Nevin, thanks for joining us. Um, if you haven't checked out the previous video on the role of fascia in athletic performance, definitely check that one out. Uh, but just a quick background on Nevin again. Um, so Nevin's worked with hundreds of pro athletes from MLB to NFL to PGA to NBA athletes. Uh, he's worked with a ton of our athletes as well. So anytime we have an athlete that comes across, you know, a, a kind of a complex issue, he's the guy that we send him to to get a kind of deeper evaluation. And he's also played a key role in my personal career with the multitude of injuries that I've had. So um, again, Nevin has a huge uh, expertise when it comes to anatomy, when it comes to soft tissue and, and rehabilitation. Uh, but I want to take the time in this video to ask him uh, kind of about the voodoo wrap, the voodoo band. Uh, this is a, a common training tool that a lot of throwers use now to kind of warm up their arm or uh, address mobility. It's a little bit controversial. Some therapists are very against it from cutting off blood flow. Uh, you know, a lot of athletes are, you know, swear by it because their arm feels so good afterwards, um, but they're not necessarily sure if they're doing it the right way. Um, so we actually do use the voodoo wrap in our own uh, training and rehabil rehabilitation protocols. Um, but Nevin kind of offers a unique insight in terms of uh, the mechanism behind how it, it might be working. Uh, there's not a huge amount of research necessarily on the voodoo band at this point, um, but because he has such this in-depth knowledge of you know the histology and uh, how fascia works, uh, I think he could provide kind of an interesting perspective on the voodoo wrap and you know why it might provide some of the the perceived benefits that it does for athletes. So, um, Nevin, thanks for being here. Um, when it sure. comes to the voodoo wrap, I guess could you talk us through maybe uh, you know the mechanism as to why it might work, basically compre wrapping, compressing a tissue and then taking it through a range of motion. Uh, what's that, what's going on there, you know, beneath the skin? Well, I'll preface it with saying we don't know for sure, because to my knowledge, there's not a lot of uh, d definitive research that, that would, uh, you know, evaluate and test the band itself. But I've used it with high success. My athletes uh, really seem to like it. Um, it's speculative, but I think it makes sense because, uh, you know, when you look at any kind of manual therapy, hands-on tools or even a band, um, you know, the, the common perception is that, you know, we're, we're just meat and bone, that we're, you know, tenderizing steak, if you will, but really we're, we're a fluid dynamic organism. We're, we're you know, 70 something percent water. And um, when you use your hands or you use a band like that, you're moving fluid through the tissue and through the fascia itself. And you see some of the images of the fascia is, you know, on a micro level is made up of all these little different water tubules. And um, when tissue functions the best, feels the best, uh, stretches the best, and uh, you know, contracts the best. Uh, one thing that's common, it has uh, adequate blood flow and fluid dynamics. So the water moves through that tissue, it's hydrated. And you'll see, you know, when tissues are chronically inflamed or stiff or tight, it doesn't have the, uh, the, the adequate uh, hydration at the cellular level and the fiber level. So when you use a band like this and you pressurize us, um, it's kind of like the concept of hydraulics. Uh, you, you pressurize a joint and that joint, like an elbow, is a closed container of fluid, synovial fluid in that case, and all the fascial fluid around it and the blood. So when you compress uh, fluid, what's interesting about it, you know, little physics lesson, the fluid uh, can't be compressed. It expands into that compression. So when you wrap an elbow, you compress the fluid, the fluid pushes back out. And so some believe, and I think it's valid, that it actually helps that joint expand slightly. So when you move it through the range of motion under compression, it may be tight from the band, but the inside surface of the joint has probably expanded a bit. And then my thought is when you take the band off, the fluid and blood rush back through, and that rehydrates, re-irrigates the tissue. Uh, that's, that's my speculation based on the anatomy. So for an athlete who, you know, maybe they're healthy, it's, it's just a matter of hydrating the tissue, but maybe you have an athlete with kind of a nerve compression issue. Like we see, we see owner nerve issues all the time. Yeah. Um, and you know, how would you maybe apply the voodoo wrap in as kind of a piece of that rehabilitation protocol and what's going on you know, there as far as you know, why are they seeing kind of a relief of symptoms, some of them with, yeah. with the voodoo wrap? So, I mean, again, speculating, but I think it makes sense, uh, and I validated some of this because we use dyna dynamic ultrasound in my clinic, so we look real time when somebody extends their elbow or their hand and we watch the tissue interface move real time. And nerves uh, are tissue that, that need to be able to slide and what's called translate. So you have a bicep, a tricep, and all the various fascia, blood vessels, and a nerve. Um, the nerve is like a hard piece of spaghetti that, that needs to slide through that interface. And uh, sometimes from previous injury, trauma, or surgery, perhaps, scar tissue, of course, but just the tissue is dehydrated and inflexible and not pliable, that nerve can uh, have a lot of friction when one bends and extends their elbow, which we can sometimes see on the ultrasound. It does not move. Um, so you can use hands-on work, like we said, but the, the band I, I've seen work pretty well. Some of it could be neurological where you stimulate receptors, but I do think you move the fluid and uh, get that nerve to slide through the muscle tissue and through the fascial tissue, which 
seems to help their symptoms pretty quickly. And just two other questions about actual application of the band. You know, the common questions that people submit are, you know, should the Voodoo band be pretty much just done as a warm-up? Should it be done kind of post-throwing or post-training as a, you know, enhanced blood flow to enhance recovery? Should it be done both? Um, and then also kind of touch on this concern, if you could, about trainers that don't really know much about it. They just see, hey, you're, you're wrapping something tight around your arm. You know, this loss of circulation, um, you know, being potentially dangerous or detrimental. Um, could you kind of touch on when to use it and then, you know, this potential concern that a lot of, uh, you know, therapists or, or maybe coaches might have? Well, I mean, you know, uh, occluding blood flow for long periods of time is probably not safe. I, I think I'd agree with that for sure. But uh, we may not have a lot of research with uh, voodoo bands themselves, but uh, there is a lot of research with uh, what's called blo blood flow restriction training, BFR, which is used at the highest levels of sport. And uh, that occludes blood a lot longer and, and a lot more uh, directly than the voodoo band does. So I don't know if that is necessarily a concern if it's used appropriately. I, usually if we use it, it's short duration, you know, use it, get the, the job done, take a break, let the tissue rehydrate, recirculate, and then come back. As far as when, I, you know, I, I think it can be used both. Um, you can, it's really about intention. You know, you can get the tissues and the nerves and everything kind of warmed up and hydrated prior, which uh, I think that that serves a benefit, especially if they feel like their joint is stiff. And again, it could be, they're just getting all the receptors and the muscles and the tissues in the fascia to wake up and make them feel uh, more aware of where their arm is in space in that case and feel better. And then afterwards, I think uh, everyone would agree that increased blood flow and increased fluid dynamics in tissue would probably be a good thing after sport or exercise to enhance recovery and uh, those mechanisms to um, you know, play out faster. Guys, if you found this video helpful or interesting, uh, Nevin has a ton of information out there online. Go follow him on Instagram at Anatomy Links. Uh, also, if you're struggling with an injury yourself, um, Nevin actually has a therapy clinic in Charlotte, North Carolina. You can reach out via his website, which we'll link in the video description below. Thanks for watching.